what does Splunk actually do? I know you guys are used to seeing my pretty face, but some of you have been wanting to see the animated version of me. So let's get it. There we go. That's much better. What is Splunk and why is it used? Splunk is a big data platform that simplifies the task of collecting and managing massive volumes of machine generated data and searching for information within it. The technology is used for business, web analytics, application management, compliance, security, and so much more. Remember, companies are focused on one thing and one thing only, and that is to make a profit. Look, who cares where files are? Some don't even know where the files are located. Exhibit A here. Or imagine your boss asks you to sift through thousands of data points to create a useless report, like my girl Carla here. And even though you are watching this channel, and that shows to me you're a techie and a day one supporter, make sure to like and subscribe, of course. You have people in the world who don't give a crap about tech and definitely don't care about data. But see, that's the power of Splunk. Imagine trying to decipher endless line of log data only to transform it into neat, cool visuals. This is a company that went public in 2012 and they're boasting 2.7 billion with a B in revenue. Splunk isn't playing small. What products do they offer? Splunk offers a range of products to help organizations collect, analyze, and gain insight from their data. And here's a simplified overview of Splunk's main product offering. But just so you guys are aware, we're gonna be focusing on Splunk Enterprise. Now Splunk Enterprise is a core product that allows you to search, analyze, and visualize machine generated data from various sources. It could be deployed on-prem or in the cloud. And it's useful for IT operations, security, analytics, and I'm gonna dive into how I've actually used it myself. How does it work? So in the words of Dwight Schrute, in an ideal world, I have all 10 fingers on my left hand, to my right could be a fist for punching. But the reality is data is unorganized. It's all over the place. It's incomplete. People put it anywhere and everywhere. Like how am I supposed to make something that is historically not useful be useful all of a sudden? There are three main stages in this data pipeline. Data collection, data indexing, and finally search and analysis. The first stage of a Splunk data pipeline is data collection. Splunk can ingest data from a wide variety of sources, including files, directories, network events, APIs. It supports common data formats, anything from CSV, JSON, XML, and even custom formats. Data collection is typically performed using what's known as forwarders, which are lightweight agents that can be installed on any machine that generates data. Data indexing. Once data is collected, it moves on to the indexing stage. Splunk indexes the data by parsing it into individual events and extracting relevant fields such as timestamps, source types, and host information. After data is indexed, it can be searched and analyzed using Splunk's powerful search language, search processing language, SPL for short. And SPL allows users to perform a wide range of operations on the data, such as filtering, aggregation, correlation, statistical analysis. This is where 95% of you are gonna be using Splunk because once you had data collected, once it's indexed, now I need to be able to search through that data. But the searching and analysis is really where you build your skills using SPL. How have I used it in real life? So as a dev in the real world, most organizations, they make sure you can't touch production level code that is. So that's where Splunk has come in for me. Splunk was the only tool I could use to track down logs of an API and try to work backwards from there. And usually this is a real life scenario. You might be sleeping quietly in your bed, having a good night rest, get a call at three in the morning. Hey, PagerDuty is calling you. Your service is down, your API is down. People are not able to log into their bank account. People can't see their money, it's a problem. And what ends up happening is you hop on a production level call, you are told, hey, it's the customer API that's having issues. Like I said, you don't have access to production. So what ends up happening is you go into Splunk and you know the name of your API, the context, whatever it is that you need to start searching and analyzing. And really what I'm always looking for are the type of calls and the status code. So what you'll see here is a sample log of a simple Git request from like a publication. API that is returning a 500. And if I can narrow down to that 500, then I can start seeing what caused the error and start working backwards from there. So why is Splunk so successful? Look, we could probably spend a whole video talking about why they're successful, but I just want to run down nine bullet points that really come to mind. Versatility, scalability, real-time insights, powerful search and analysis, extensibility, the community, which if you didn't know, they called Spelunkers. And if you're curious on the name Splunk, where did that come from? Is it like this like a hosh posh of words? 
No. Splunk actually comes from spelunking, which is the whole sport of diving into caves, something you'll never catch me doing. But that community, people come together to figure out how to use Splunk to help puppies grow into healthy dogs or how to brew better beer. The list is crazy insane. And then lastly, the customer support, the continuous innovation. Splunk started off as just simply collection, indexing, searching, and now they just have a vast list of products. And then sometimes when you're first, like Vicky Bobby said, if you ain't first, you last. And Splunk is really like the first big data ingestion tool that's become super popular. And the reality is they got market demand. You're, you're see with the competitors, they're trying to catch up. But when you got that head start, it's just sometimes easier to be in first. How much does it cost? Now, we've been talking about Splunk Enterprise and look, it's expensive. If you're talking about Splunk Enterprise on-prem, you're usually paying an annual or biannual licensing. Pricing is really based on the amount of data ingested per day. And that's also including hosting, maintenance, and support. So let's just say Enterprise and Cloud can cost up to $100,000, but most likely a lot more. But for you guys watching this video and you want to get started today, there is a free version called Splunk Free, which allows you to use many of the features we've talked about today. Who are the competitors? Now, Splunk for me is my favorite one, but I've also worked with companies I've gone with the competitors. Elastic Stack or Elk Stack, that is the open source alternative to Splunk. And if you actually go to Elastic Stack's site, you'll notice that they're offering the Red Hat package where it's like, yes, it's open source, but we will provide you like professional support at a price. My personal experience is not as good, and it's usually because you get what you pay for. But sometimes companies can't afford those six figure bills, so they have to go open source. Another popular option these days is Datadog. Datadog is a cloud-based monitoring and analytics platform that's focusing on infrastructure and application performance. We will be doing a video on Datadog itself. And they offer a wide range of integrations and truly Datadog is known for its ease of use, visualization, and AI power insights. It's a true competitor. But at this point, Splunk has a more extensive feature set and it's better suited for more complex security and compliance use cases. So if you're thinking insurance or fintech or any of those big, large corporations, Splunk are usually the go-to. How do I get started? Like I said earlier, look, if you guys want to see us do a complete, we will do that. Let us know in the comment section below. But here, what I have linked are these tutorials. And what's really cool is if you're a newbie looking to learn Splunk with little to no money, there's several free resources. You can download Splunk for free. There's the Splunk Learning Path. There's Splunk Fundamentals. And then, like I said, there's the Splunkers the Splunk community. Where do I go from here? Look, we covered a lot, but there's still so much more to be discovered. We didn't even dive into cybersecurity or some of the cool edge cases. Like I said, aren't you curious how people use Splunk to help puppies grow into healthy dogs? Who doesn't love a dog? That's what I'm saying, guys. Like, you're just getting started. So where to go from here? I would highly encourage you to go check out the Splunk website. Go check out the links that we have pasted in the description below. Because look, Splunk might seem complex at first, but its mission is straightforward. Make sense of the chaotic world of logs and drive action. Until next time, let us know what we missed in the comment section below. But that's all I got for you guys.